and create this Titanfall inspired project in about 8 hours. This all started because Cinti just released a brand new mech pack which they did kindly provide me and if you've watched any videos on this channel you know I'm a massive fan of the stuff Cinti puts out and I knew this would slip right into their sci-fi world pack very nicely. You can see on screen now the trailer they put out for the new mech pack, showing off the variety of mech prefabs they have, plus the entire thing is modular too. You also get some bonus mech pilot models if you want those. And the process for this project was to first make a new Unity project with the first person template from the Unity hub, before importing the sci-fi worlds pack and the mech pack. This is relatively simple from a coding point of view. I just listen for the Q key being pressed. When it's pressed, it does a raycast and it spawns in a mech spawner prefab. Then when the player goes up to the mech and interacts with it, it swaps to a slightly higher Cinemachine camera and swaps the player's UI for the mech hood. The bulk of getting this effect to work was through an animation on the mech spawner prefab, which I thought I'd go through now. Okay, so the main effect is through this mech spawner prefab here, which when the player spawns it in, it starts to play this animation. So we can see the animation here. If we go through it, it brings down the mech. The mech opens up its hand. And it's a bit wooden, uh, the actual animation. It's a little bit wooden. You can see it's coming down from, uh, from the sky. Here it comes. I don't know what's going on with that effect there, just ignore that. Um, but what we can see here is we have some different particle effects. So at the very start when it spawns, we're gonna have these spawn particles. So you can see this is made up of three separate particle systems. We've got uh, this one, which is the, um, the arrows on top. I was trying to make them bounce up and down. I couldn't quite figure it out. Uh, they were being a bit weird. Um, but we have these arrows which indicate the exact location. We've got this uh, ring effect that kind of throbs in and out. And then we also have the sparkles just kind of showing that something is inbound. And altogether, that's what that looks like. And in our animation, you can see that we've got a full audio clip, which is just... Um, a few different clips from Epidemic Sound, which I took into Adobe Audition and made loop. So we've got our Rocket Booster looped here, and uh, we can just play that. So we've got that as it's coming down to land, that's kind of it falling from space, kind of like the thrusters. Uh, we've got landing audio, which is just an explosion that kind of happens at the end. You can see here that gets uh, checked on. This landing audio is just this mech landing crash, which again is a big sort of collection of uh, sound effects that I've made in Adobe Audition. So that's what this is. So you can see there's a lot of different uh, kind of sounds there. And then when we land, it's just some more particle effects as well. So we've got the smoke trail particles, which are set to simulate in world space. So as we move them around, they kind of trail behind. And that's actually two particle systems, one for the kind of like bright uh, central colors, and then one for the darker kind of smoke colors that you can see. that so as you can imagine as this falls down just drag that up so as this is animated to fall out of the sky it leaves this sort of trail behind it then we've got our explosion particles which uh, happen just as the mech hits and lands we turn on our explosion particles now there are some things that we can't do through the animator or if we did, I couldn't figure out quite how to get them to do what I wanted in the animator. So I do have this event here on the animation, which calls a function on a C Sharp script on mech landed. So in our mech spawner script, we have this method here on mech landed animation. So when this event, when the animation gets to this point here, it calls this method uh, on our script. So this is going to set our particles to false. So that's these ones, the kind of landing animation. They'll be turned off. 
we stop our full smoke particles, play the landing explosion particles, and then we generate an impulse which our camera is listening to using Cinemachine that just wobbles the camera a little bit, and then we set the game object's layer to 11 which is the interaction layer, which means that we can go up to it and press E to get into the mech. What all this looks like as it comes together is if I just revert all of this, set our animation to zero, you can see it's coming down and landing, and we can actually follow this down a bit so we can see it from a different kind of angle. Uh, I wish I knew what was going on with the sky. So if we hit play, you can see it starts off there and it's animating down with a part behind it, and then it lands and hits on the ground. Watch that come down. So it's quite a simple animation and effect. It's just particles and some audio and then a little bit of animation on the actual mech itself. Now I'm not an animator, this isn't rigged particularly well because you see it just it's very static, lands and then opens up. And I did that by just manually keyframing the skeleton's uh, positions, the bone positions. So that opens up and then it gets set to the interact layer which on our player I've got an interaction script I've done various tutorials on interaction scripts I'm not going to cover that here um, the main things to know are we've got some on foot stats and in mech stats that's just controlling the player movement sort of speed and how slow they are so when they're in the mech they can become slower and that's just a scriptable object that's got a move speed, sprint speed, rotation speed, jump height. You can see there the on-foot stats. These are the in-mech stats. And then our player capsule has got two cameras on it. It's got the default um, first-person camera. Which, there is a gun. I don't know why that's missing from the... Um, Okay, that's an issue for another day. I don't really know why that isn't um, showing up. So on our player capsule, we've got a Cinemachine installed and we've got our follow camera, which is this camera here for the kind of normal height um, for the player. And then we've also got a mech camera, which is higher up. And I kind of positioned that sort of where the mech's head is. So we drag the mech in See, it's probably just a little bit too high compared to the mech head, but it doesn't really matter too much. You know, you can tweak that to your game. So when the character presses E and climbs into the mech, we just blend into this new camera. We just say, hey, now let's look through this camera. So what's actually happening here is if with our player, if we go forward and we call in our mech, you can see there's a bit of camera shake when it lands. opens up its hand and the cockpit, we can go up to it and press E. So what happens is the mech gets deleted and we swap to the top camera and also we get turned to face that direction because that's where the mech's facing. So it makes sense that if we climb into the cockpit, we'd be looking through its head which is pointing that way. So we press E, the mech's destroyed, our camera gets transitioned and we are then swapped to our mech stats which means we walk slower but we can run faster and jump higher than if we were in um, if we were just on foot. So it's actually quite a simple sort of process. So yeah, it was eight hours. I mean, most of that was just setting up the kind of animation, making sure everything looked right, implementing the sounds. I had to kind of get uh, different sounds and edit them in Adobe Audition. But yeah, I hope that was useful to at least one person watching this video. If this was useful to one person, could that one person leave a comment below? Um, but in the meantime, thanks for watching. Make sure to check out this new mech pack, it is really cool. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!